Welcome to WXTV, your online source for weatherization training. In today's episode, we'll be focusing in on working with lead-based paints and how to do it safely. The Department of Energy has established their minimum criteria for working with lead-based paints that they call Lead Safe Weatherization, or LSW for short. Now EPA has followed up with their own rule called Renovation, Repair and Painting, or RRP for short. We want to examine the similarities between the two, as well as the differences, by working our way through the 12 steps that you need to take to work safely with lead-based paints. Homes built prior to 1978 require special consideration by weatherization crews. Before that, lead was used in paint for all surfaces of the home. It improved durability, corrosion and mold resistance, and enhanced the color of paint. The older the house, the more likely that lead will be found. While it was a great additive, we now recognize the health hazards associated with lead-based paints. When it's disturbed by cutting, drilling, scraping, heating, or sanding, dust is generated that can be inhaled or ingested. This dust causes permanent damage to workers and occupants, especially children. In 2001, the Department of Energy established a set of minimum lead-safe weatherization, or LSW, standards. This minimized the generation, spread, and retention of lead in the weatherization workplace. Then in 2008, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency enacted the Lead Renovation, Repair, and Painting Rule, or RRP. Lead safe weatherization is a series of practices and procedures to make sure that we do not make a lead paint hazardous situation worse in a home. Hi, I'm Rob DeSoto and I work in the Weatherization Assistance Program at the Department of Energy's Golden Field Office. There has been some confusion in the weatherization program regarding the difference between LSW and RRP and the roles of workers, certified renovators, and training required for both. Let me try to clarify the main differences. The program guidance for 2010 states that all weatherization workers and contractors working on homes built in 1978 or earlier must have undergone LSW training and must follow the DOE minimum standards in their work as defined in the grant guidance. The RRP is a federal law promulgated by the EPA and is to be enforced by the EPA. All certifications related to the RRP, including certified firms and certified renovators, must be conducted by EPA certified training facilities and follow EPA approved curriculums. Each weatherization job site for impacted homes, those built before 1979, must have a certified renovator oversee the work activities, which are the LSW procedures, and must certify that the activities were conducted as required by the RRP and that final cleanup and testing was done, leaving the house at acceptable standards. So we've seen some of the history, and we've heard DOE's perspective on it all. Now let's jump right into those 12 steps for working safely with lead-based paints. We're in the lab here at WXTV, and this is where all of our hands-on and classroom trainings take place. And that's just it. That's the very first step in this whole process, training. So both of these rules have very specific requirements for training. LSW requires a minimum of eight hours of training. Now RRP, the EPA rule, also requires a minimum of eight hours of training, two of which must be in a hands-on setting, going through 12 specific skill sets. So a lot of similarities there, just a few differences for that first step of training. Step two is determining the age of the property. Now this is pretty easy to do. You can usually just take a look at building records and find out the year that the property was built. The magic number that you're looking for is 1978 because at that time the Consumer Product Safety Commission banned the use of lead-based paint in residential and child-occupied facilities. Now step three is determining whether or not lead is actually present. With either rule, you can always just assume lead is present and treat it accordingly. The Department of Energy has traditionally operated this way. Testing was not considered an allowable expense with weatherization money because it had to be done by XRF or paint chip analysis, which can be expensive. But now that RRP has come along, the power to test is in the hands of the certified renovator using EPA recognized test kits. Using this method, testing is the same for both rules and now an allowable expense under LSW. 
It's done with a test swab that looks like this. All swabs must be approved by EPA prior to use. This one here is a lead check swab by HyberVet Systems. Let's take a look. If you open up the inside, you'll notice that there's a liquid component, and over here there's a powder. Your job as the certified renovator prior to testing is to mix those two up. And you do that by simply crushing the two ends. Flipping it up and shaking it for 30 seconds to a minute. Now we'll kind of skip a few of those seconds and take a look inside. You'll note that bright orange color. What you're looking for is a change in color indicating that lead is present. So as you swab your surface, if this remains orange, there's no lead there and you can go about business as usual. But if it turns from this orange color to a red, you know that lead is present and you need to evoke lead safe work practices. For testing, you want to make sure that you're testing all of the components that will be disturbed during the renovation process. So in this case, we're going to replace uh, the inside of this window just doing a retrofit. So we won't be disturbing the trim that's going around the window, just the interior here. But that's important to note. You notice you have two different painting histories here. If you are going to be disturbing additional components, you want to make sure that you're testing all of those components that have a different painting history. So let's check it out. We've got some plastic on the floor and what I like to do is, just before testing, take a little plastic bag and put it under the piece that we're gonna we're gonna check out here. That way you can catch anything that you're you're gonna be cutting. You want to take a knife, you want to cut at an angle, that way you're exposing as many different layers of paint as are on there. And you want to cut this out. Go all the way down to the wood. And of course this is a destructive process. So you want to make sure that the homeowner knows before you're doing this that, that this is going to be taking place. So as you can see right here we've got this all exposed. And that's the area we're going to test. So we've got our testing swab. I'm going to want to squeeze some out. You can see a little bit coming out there. As you can see, we are not getting a color change. We just still have this, this faint orange on there. So no lead is present on here. We'd be able to go about uh, business as usual. But what we want to do is make sure that this is actually working. So when you order these, you actually get a little card here. And this card does contain lead. So what you're going to do is test to make sure your test swab is working. As we rub it on one of these circles here, you can see that you're getting a faint red color. Sometimes it's a little uh, darker than that, but clearly it's red. That means that this is working because this card contained lead and so uh, we're good to go on this job. Want to dispose of these? It's the other reason for having this baggie here. I can take that with me. Step four is all about educating the client. And you're going to want to do that with this. Renovate right. Both LSW and RRP require that you hand this out to the client prior to starting work. You can hand deliver it or you can use certified mail.